Black Veil Brides. I genuinely mean it from the bottom of my heart that if the members of Black Veil Brides looked like ass, their fan base would get chopped in at least half or over. Panic at the Disco. People don't quite understand that routinely trying to get you to dislike Brendan Urie for his antics and allegations is always going to be useless. It's not that you don't believe them, you absolutely do. What they don't understand is you wanted said things to happen to you instead. Plus, with his voice, it's the Michael Jackson effect. Dude could have become a serial killer and Panic fans would have forgave him. May Day Parade. Proof that catchy riffs can carry you literally anywhere if you really try your hardest, no matter how mediocre of a band you actually are. Hawthorne Heights. You know more about barcodes than a Walmart receipt printer machine, and I'm leaving it at that. Alisana. Real emo bitches know that the emptiness is the Hamilton of the entire genre. If you know, you know, and if you don't, you're probably very confused right now. Anne Berlin. You are holding on for dear life to this band to be the only living example that emo can have a singular grain of swagger left over and bad boy demeanor, even if it's just left in shreds. Taking Back Sunday. You all have no excuse for being horrendously bullied when you confidently listen to a fucking song named Cute Without the E. Come on, you couldn't have done fucking better than that. Weezer. Weezer is sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, a case study, and I mean that. They are the only band that can somehow start off as a meme, people miss the point entirely and take them seriously, and then come to the fact and realize they're a meme and appreciate them for that, then somehow end up having such a heavy resurgence that an entirely new fucked up group of basement dwellers take them in incredibly serious again. Weezer fans scare me, and if there was a single band on this list I would not want to get into an argument with a fan of, it's hands down Weezer. All time low. Okay. You guys aren't gonna like this and I'm going to promptly run away as fast as I can after saying this, but All Time Low is a poor man's fallout boy, even down to the shitty pop rock rebrand, and they still did even that worse. Bye! 30 seconds to Mars. I can't even make it. This is music for the crowd of people that say I'm going to become Joker from the movie Joker joked at this. My fucking god. Sleeping with sirens. You are permanently stuck in the mindset of being the dark, broody, misunderstood main character of a one season and then cancelled CW teen drama constantly. Pianos become the teeth. The favorite band of any chronic overthinker and this is clinically proven because I said it was. Seosin. Era if they were an emo band. Seosin fans, listen to Era if you like metal. Era fans, listen to Seosin if you like emo and post hardcore. You are both welcome. The Red Jumpsuit Apparatus. You were more traumatized than your average emo fan, weren't you? 21 Pilots. The prime definition of few good emo bands coming out of this era combined with old emo bands making generic pop rock now so that this is all we're left with and we point at it and just lump it in with everything because it's at least better than the drought we've been going through. Pierce the Veil. You simply cannot be fucked to care how much King for a Day gets overplayed. Cute is what we aim for. Introducing everything wrong with MySpace, the band. Senses fail. You know, I truly thought Jimmy Eat World were annoying enough, but somehow we had a band who took them and tried to turn it post-hardcore, and the results are exactly what you might think they would be. Lost Profits? <laughs> They're still your fucking favorite. <laughs> they were even your favorite band to begin with. <laughs> One OK Rock, the number one culprit of cannot write a song that doesn't radiate I am not like other girls or alternatively I am Batman and Gotham needs me energy. Empire Empire, post metal and atmosphere fans that love emo music are clinging to this band for dear life. Eyes Set to Kill, you know their first album blew them up into success because of the intrigue of them and lord have mercy did it all go fucking downhill from there. A Day to Remember, you know this shit is such a shame because of how elitist metal Core fans detest and just cease to claim a day to remember, and so many emo fans say they're too heavy to be emo is hilarious because it's like a day to remember crossed over into like four different communities and movements and none of them want them. <laughs> From first to last, you are so tired of seeing Sonny Moore being given the monkey being put on display in a steel cage at a zoo treatment when every normie points like Leonardo DiCaprio proclaiming, oh my god, that's Skrillex, did you know that's Skrillex? Guys, that's Skrillex! Falling in reverse. Look, before Ronnie went full Tom McDonald metalcore in recent memory and went on his villain arc that no one asked him to fucking go on and tripped on NF acid, you were already fighting the battle for how poorly their entire back catalog aged. No excuses, be honest. How much is nostalgia and how much of it is good music? I'll leave you with that one. Escape the Fate. Funnily enough, to contrast the previous entry, the only good era of Escape the Fate was Ronnie's. Fight me. Newfound Glory. I mean, you know, I'll give him this. Writing catchy songs about the trials of growth 
growing up as a very emo thing, and it's honestly pretty endearing and cute, and they wrote it in a pretty admirable way until they almost reach their fucking 50s, and it starts to lose a little bit of its magic. American football. Emo might be all about getting in your feels, but if my chem can fuck up an entire generation with a singular G note, let's just say that American football can make someone have a complete three-hour inner monologue of their entire childhood with one riff. Trust me on this one. Alexis on Fire. The middle ground of the dividing line between seeing emo kids and hardcore screamo fans and metalcore fans. Flyleaf. For any girl that listened to Peak Flyleaf, I promise you that Lacey Sturm did not personally know you, and for any boys, I can confirm that you would not want a girlfriend like Lacey Sturm. City of Caterpillar. <sighs> Welcome, kid, to the musical equivalent of a manic bipolar episode every single track. Can I interest you in one? Captain Jazz. How are you gonna inspire scary kids scaring kids' name and then proceed to get outdone by them, man? Shit's sad. Coheed and Cambria. No, wait, wait, this isn't right. You aren't allowed to break the rules like this. Emo bands aren't supposed to be cool! Story of the year. Still some of the best emo screams in any band of this era, and somehow still an incredibly slept on band, but I also don't entirely blame people since their production consistently towed the line of produced enough to sound like an industry plant, but raw enough to feel like you accidentally stepped foot in the high school band talent show, and it's phenomenal that they somehow managed both. Dashboard Confessional. Emo fans were bullied horrendously at the peak of it, yet every Dashboard fan was the dark and mysterious character that everyone truly wondered what they were pontificating about. I don't know how y'all got the aura of the deep philosopher of the group, but congratulations, I guess. The Used. The emo band that somehow radiates a concerning amount of smashing pumpkins if they laid a bit off the theater kid and laid more into the I'm going to put you in my suicide note and blame this all on you energy. Plain White Tees. Dear fucking lord up above, the plain white tees were one of my least favorite fucking bands from this era. Their dreary, minimalistic bullcrap put me to sleep and I don't know how anyone liked them. Under Oath! Christians are like fuck yes, agnostics do not give a singular shit, and atheists don't mind because when you write music this fire, you just have to go with it. My Chemical Romance! At least 9-11 gave y'all one good thing? <laughs> Look it up. Metro Station! I have fought for years desperately to block this band out of my brain at all cost, and if you had done so yourself, I sincerely apologize for reminding you when you are absolutely entitled to financial compensation. The Killers, the crossover band that you can forever flex about considering how fucking sick it is to say you wrote two of the most well-known and beloved emo anthems despite not even being an emo band. The All-American Rejects, I fully believe that if the term and culture existed around it back then, this would have been one of the favorite bands of the Reddit incels. Sunny Day real estate. Oh man, how much of a pain in the dick it must have been to be a moody broody band in the 1990s and still only have the seventh best-selling album on Sub Pop, not even at the time, but all the way to 2008. I mean, congratulations, but damn, that must suck. Paramore. You wanted a bit more edge in you and didn't want to feel as girly pop as Avril Lavigne, so red-haired Avril Lavigne with some punkism would have to settle, but I do give y'all a pass since they came back and somehow were low-key better than most of their original output. Jimmy Eat World. I do not care how big their numbers were. Jim Atkins, whether in his prime or not, has always had the vocal presence of a rusted doorknob. Rites of Spring. Considering how short their lifespan was, the fact they were far before their time, were not well respected except in the underground until after they were gone, I think it's safe to say that Rites of Spring are the William Wallace of the emo and post-hardcore scenes. Motherfuckers straight up paved the way for that shit and then just dipped. Embrace. The above statement stays correct. Silverstein. Silverstein's music radiates beta male woes in a way I cannot properly ascertain nor explain, but I truly do believe and stand by this. Does this mean it still doesn't fucking smack? I didn't say that now, did I? Silverstein rocks. Death Cab for Cutie. I'm sorry, you guys. Y'all used to really enjoy some good ass minimalistic emo music until they discovered that writing basic guitar ballads for 15 year old blonde girls living in rural Arkansas was more of a money maker, and can you even blame them? Evanescence. You know, it's straight up impressive to me to be a metal and rock band that can pack in so much angst that an entire generation of emo kids adopt you as their calling card, and simultaneously could discover that distorted electric guitars and screamed vocals and growled vocals existed in the world, so thanks to them for being a great gateway, I guess. Rise Against. Rise Against is the one non-emo equivalent of the dude who gets let into the nightclub simply because he's too fucking cool looking to turn away, and once he's in, he's somehow better than the people that are actually supposed to be there. Fallout Boy. 
you know, it must feel pretty nice to have a solid 20 plus straight bangers in succession to your favorite band's name, but you still aren't over the resentment you felt at pop listeners when they crossed over into the mainstream. Drive Like Jehu It must feel good that your favorite band dropped two records before this genre even took its form and both have still borderline been yet to be outdone. Linkin Park. I mean, I gotta give it to you. Transcending your entire genre to be lumped in with emo is hilarious, since where does it leave Linkin Park fans that were left on the fringe? I mean, if emo was entirely defined by being misunderstood, and Linkin Park's early material was entirely about being misunderstood and an outcast, I don't really know where it leaves them. If a trillion people end up feeling heard, does that mean we all went full circle and aren't even misunderstood anymore? Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, drop a like, share it around, and subscribe if you're new here to join the review family. I would love to have you here and comment down below your favorite emo band, your favorite installment here, as well as what you would like to see in the future. I would love to hear it. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys next time. You know who it is. My name is Jay Morris and I'm signing off saying farewell.